It's song. good to have a special song. Yeah, we kind of sprung it on too. So. Haven't sung in a while. Special. Uh, it's Jesus, resurrection. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> That's one of the next things that's about to happen. He's going to come back and get us. Bulletin looks like this. We're listening in on the, uh, the stream. We're talking about Jesus, the work he did on the cross, and that on the he arose out of that grave. Death could not hold him. He is alive today, folks. He's alive. He's alive and I am forgiven. Amen. Matthew 27, 50. I'm going to preface uh, today the remarks I have to say with Matthew 27, 50 and then I, I want to go down a little ways for that. And when Jesus had cried out, it is finished, he gave up his spirit. And then after the resurrection, and he said unto them, Be not of God, he is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Death couldn't hang on its grip on Jesus. 
Because he is victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Amen? That's what Easter, that's the stone that the women kept saying, who's going to roll this stone away? It couldn't keep him in. The great clothes couldn't stop him. Hallelujah. We did that last week. It gives us a pinpointed time line that six days before the Passover, Jesus came to see in the home of Mary prior to Palm Sunday. And then on the next day, he rode into Jerusalem in his triumphal entry. The next day, Jesus cleared the temple of money changers. He said, my house has become a den of thieves, and I don't like it. <laughs> and the next day, he then went out to the Mount of Olives and taught about end time events. Matthew 21, 23, 20, and then to 24 and 5. It was then that the high priests gathered together and they said, we've got to get rid of this man. Caiaphas, the high priest, Jesus, the Lamb of God for the sacrifice. Jesus said, May would never, ever be of any value anymore because Jesus, the Lamb, was so didn't know he was following the will and plan of God. Because without Christ dying on that cross, we could not have salvation. Revealed to his disciples and to the world, basically, that he had power over death when he raised Lazarus from the grave. Hello? It happened that way. I'm going to be crucified. He had told them, I will be crucified. They didn't believe. Will be rebuilt in three days. They still didn't believe him. Thought they, he was talking about a building. He was talking about himself. But he said, I have power. By that, don't be afraid. Don't be frightened of all of this. Don't be worried. I am crucified on that cross because there will be victory in three days. Hallelujah. Sunday's coming. So, he has power over death. And after the people began to see the miracles from the dead, and he was, he was how long? Four days in the grave. That's what they said. But Jesus came, having waited, and just simply called Lazarus out of the grave. And if he could, so 14th of Nisan, 30, 2 Chronicles 35, Matthew 26. The priests slayed the Passover lambs at 3 p.m. and continued. See, the people would bring their lambs after having been in no blemish. Why was that? Because Jesus, the lamb, was going to come and he, without spot and without blemish, would die for us. So they would look and make sure they would bring a lamb without spot, without blemish. And so they would slay these lambs in all the way from 3 to 5 o'clock. Passover would come when the Sabbath came. Their Sabbath, Saturday, would happen at 6 p.m. So he couldn't hang on the cross. So it was determined that they would even break his legs. Remember that? Two thieves went on each side of him. They broke their legs, but when they came to Jesus, it didn't need to be broken. He was already gone. He gave up his spirit, willing. He determined. And at three o'clock, exactly when they would start, begin to slay those Passover lambs, the Paschal lamb. The Lamb of God, perfect, sinless, to die as an expression of our sins, that our sin people would bring, and they would take those lambs, and, and they would go dinner, the Passover meal, and they would cook the lambs, one for a household, and if the household was too big, 
are too small, that would make, you remember back over in Exodus, we saw that beginning to happen. And so, them became their Jewish Sabbath. And then they would eat the Passover lamb. So, there was a trial, crucifixion, death and burial on Good Friday. And he died on that day. Everything that took place in the Lord's Supper, the communion, partake of a meal together, and they did. It all prefigured the passion of our Christ. It all said something about he is going to die. But was he going to stay like that? No, he told them in three days. I'll, come, I'll, I'll raise back up. Everything that took place all had significance. It was the last Passover of the Old Covenant and the first of the New. Hallelujah! Thank God. Praise God. And from noon until 3 in the afternoon, I'm reading in verse 45. From noon until 3 in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. From noon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Which meant, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? They said, he's calling for Elijah. And immediately one. And he filled it with wine vinegar and he put it on the staff and he offered it to Jesus to drink. And the rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah. But when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, it is finished. He gave up his spirit. What did he mean? What was this all about? It is finished. What does it mean? Well, first, before we talk about what that specifically meant, what happened when he said that? What happened? Hmm. According to the scriptures right there, in immediacy, seven things happened. Number one, he gave up his spirit. The temple was torn into And it was thick, it was heavy. And no man could have torn that, but God could. What else happened? The earth began to shake. Number four, the rocks split in two. Number five, the tombs broke open. In the cemeteries, the tombs came open. The bodies of the that died were raised to life. All when Jesus died on that cross. God was saying something, wouldn't you admit? God was definitely saying, this is my son. Wow. How did it feel that? Went over inside of me. How did it feel to those people that day when that, these things happened? Seven things happened. The, the last thing was when the centurion and those who were guarding Jesus, saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and they surely he was the son of God. Wow. Can you imagine how this all must have felt? They were proclaiming Jesus Christ as the son of God. Finally. Finally. It was happening. Finally, God got their attention. Sure, this of God. It is finished, he said. And it set off a series of these things happening. The rock splitting. The bodies of people of God came back, back to life and walked Jesus were made believers that he was the son of God. Whether they accepted him or not, it sure sounded like they may have. 
Hallelujah. It is finished. What does that mean? It means to bring to an end. It's, it's teleo. Something. To accomplish it to the full. To execute it. To conclude the very last dot of the I and the very last dot of the T. Teleo. It's finished. But you know, it also comes from Tedalesta. What does that mean? It means it has been, and listen to this one, this is important. It has been and will forever remain finished. Nothing can undo it. <laughs> Woo! Talk about victory. It has been and will forever. Jesus died for us. That was Good Friday. You listening? That was Good Friday. I paid the price of their immortal souls. I have made an end to blood sacrifice for the time that he saw you and you and you and you and all of you and everyone out there and he's he was saying, I see you today and you need. And he paid the price of our immortal souls. So, hello, you won't die then. And folks, one more thing I want to drop in here is that we didn't miss it. We got it. And he said in Romans 11, 11, I say, then have they stumbled, but they see so that they come back. Hallelujah. Woo. The branch of the natural olive tree, that's the Jewish people, God's people. It is more time. There's a lot of them coming back. Hello. And they're going to be saved. The branch of the natural olive tree had been broken off, but guess what? That wild olive tree, us, got grafted in. Woo! Saved. And there's nothing like it in all the world that we are saved by the blood of Jesus. And when he that clock just, I mean, the hands on it just pointed right at us. <laughs> so now it's your turn. There we go. Woo! And he's still saying, come. Whosoever will might come and find eternal life. Hallelujah. Jesus gave up his life willingly, 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 and made it possible for us to come to him. When you see that, when you if you are of a Gentile society, a part of life, then it makes you shout for joy because we died. Jesus died for us. He died for the whole world. For God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. Are you listening? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It's powerful. When we had no Jesus gave up his life willingly as a free will offering for our sins. He finished it. And being finished the work being finished means Sunday. Sunday had to come. The resurrection had to come. For he is risen and he is risen indeed. It's powerful. Two millennia after his death, people are still flocking. Flocking to that empty tomb. Oh, he is risen. Jerusalem. 
oh, for so many years. That's why I've heard so many people say, I've just got to get to Jerusalem. Got to see. I know it's real. I know it is, but I just want to see where he lay for three days. Mark 16, 2, 3, and 4. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, Who shall roll the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away. Very great, too heavy for man to roll away, too heavy for one to do. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting at the right side, clothed, and they were frightened. And he said unto them, Be not which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Spoke to him, He is risen, he's risen indeed. Behold, the one that was here empty tomb because it's finished now. It's totally finished. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Zion is restored in truth and life. Hallelujah. He is risen and it is strikingly no one else quite like this. All creation was renewed. All was renewed in the resurrection of the Son of God. Because now, where never before could we, we could come boldly into the throne of grace because Jesus has become our blood sacrifice. Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, is now on the throne. Satan is defeated. He is defeated, and the great harvest of souls can now come into heaven. And from that time to this, there have been multitudes, multitudes, multitudes that have come into the kingdom. Ooh, through the blood of Jesus Christ, the first fruits, he's the first fruits of the great harvest, for he arose. And he sprinkled it on the altar, the mercy seat in heaven. The type of the shadow we had here on earth, he sprinkled on the throne, eternally at the right hand of the Father. God made three promises, but God kept his word. Satan is defeated, number one. What did he say in Genesis 3.15? There's the three. And I was between you, talking about the woman, and you, Satan, and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, he's going to bruise And Satan, you're going to just get to bruise his heel. That's it. But he's going to bruise your head. He's going to step on your head. Or from you. In all finality. From off of the people. So that they can walk with me. Colossians 2, 14, 15. The handwriting of requirements that was against us. Which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way. Having nailed it to his cross. Just think about this. The sin of you and sins. And he took them and he nailed them to his cross so that when we came to him and we said, forgive me, for I have sinned, forgive me. Well, that was against us, which was contrary to us. He has taken it out of the way. Having nailed it to the cross, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of Satan. Jesus kept his promise. God kept his promise. The power of sin has been broken. 
for those who will walk with God in faith, hope, and trust in Jesus. We have the power and the ability to walk sinless before him. 12, 14. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of sin. For you are not under law, but you're under grace. Woo. Sin can't have dominion over you. If, hang on to that. Tell the devil, get out of God in this word. any man sins we have an advocate with the father hello jesus christ the righteous one like a lawyer good stands for us because we're going to a place where there isn't even going to be the presence of sin hallelujah i can only imagine that it will be sinless place. There will be nothing there to deter us from any, in any way. First Corinthians 15, 54, 58. So when this corruptible is, corruptible is put the victory, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God who gives us a victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. He'll reward you for everything. And the promise God made to Satan was completely completed, fulfilled. And Jesus died on that cross that he rose again. First Corinthians 15, 20, that now Christ has as the first fruits came alive, we will live also. Hallelujah. You see, it was all for us. He did all of that for you and for me. All of it. He died on the cross for you. He died. Jesus would not stop. Even when they said, call a legion of angels to put you down from this cross. He knew he could. But he finished the work, and that's why it's been laying heavy in my nine tails, 39 stripes, where the glass and metal rocks tore his flesh from his body. In spite of the crown of thorns, in spite of the sword that they pierced his side with, in spite of all of that, he kept his word, and he went the full limit that that cross called for and he gave his life for you and for me. couldn't stop till he dotted every eye and crossed every T. Every prophecy concerning his death, his burial, was all accomplished just like that. He did it. Gotcha, didn't it? He died for us. Have you ever pushed through something when it felt like it was impossible to do? Have you ever just had to, to grit your teeth and bear this one particular task that you knew you wouldn't happen and it had to happen? I've been thinking about this. And it went all the way back to 1967. Not quite a year old. Young child. We took a trip. We went to Colorado. We went to this beautiful place called Seven Falls. Back in that day, there was no elevator to Midpoint or Dam. Now there is, after all these years and renovations. But in the, the ramp, up 
believe it was 1,250 foot wall, a box canyon, 200. <laughs> Every single bit of it. And so Lewis picked up Rob, put him in his arms, and we started climbing steps. And we climbed and we pushed. Rob got passed off to me, and I got tired quicker. <laughs> and he was a young man of 20 years old, and I never created many muscles, <laughs> but I carried him lovingly, and we started looking back over our shoulder and seeing where we'd been and looking up at where we were going, and we, at one point, I mean, we were halfway and we knew we just get to, if we, if we could just get to the top. And back and forth, we passed Rob from my arms to his arms and his arms to mine, but longer time on his arms. Lovingly, realizing that one little slip and we could drop our precious child. That this child had to be protected all the way to the top and back. There was no element take us to the top or to take us down and we and we fully enjoy it they said you lights and it's so beautiful and you see seven different falls as they would come down those granite walls beautiful beyond compare scenery in Colorado hmm. it was fascinating but those 224 steps were grueling. And when we finally got back down, only then did we realize in the process of that, we had lost one of Rod's brand new shoes. <laughs> and when we got down, get it up. You understand what I'm saying? May not have been quite as bad. Now, I tell you what. The other day, I actually watched a young man. And he looked like maybe he was 18, 19, 20, young. Before he got halfway, he was puffing and puffing and barely able to climb. It's that group worth it. advice to carry a baby. Especially, and Rod was never a little bitty thing. I'm sorry. Healthy, growing, fast. <laughs> the earls just do that. <laughs> well, hoppers, 224. We look back and it's, mm, we can't drop our baby. We can't, it's a workout. But we carried him up those stairs and right back down again, resting a little while at the top. Our arms stayed out. We were so tired. With all of our strength, there was never a point that we thought about setting him down on the step. Mm -hmm. Never out of our arms. We got to the bottom. He lost one shoe, but what I think Jesus had so much pain and what we went through there was nothing compared but I remember the pain and having to push through and couldn't stop complete and through we couldn't trip you understand I can see Jesus and they're my kids they're, they're, they're my family they're my Brothers, my sisters, they're my family. Quit. Because every last one of them that wants salvation can have it then. I will complete this task. And Jesus was in severe pain. 
severe pain, but he wouldn't call for 10,000 angels. He wouldn't call for heaven to help him. He took it. And then he finished it once and for all forever. No one can change this now. It's complete. Now when he held out his hands, whosoever will might come and find eternal life because it's finished. The work for him, he wouldn't turn loose of you from off of that cross. And I don't know who's listening to this today, but I know this, if you're listening and you've not known him or maybe you've known him and you walk back, it's time to remember that he would turn loose of you for whosoever will might come and find reconciled to man. We couldn't get to God. We couldn't reach him until Jesus came and, and rose again to show us that the tomb Death cannot hold us either. We have family and members of our families and loved ones. But the tomb couldn't hold their spirit. The spirit is with God. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those tombs are going to come open. They're going to burst. Their bodies are going to meet their spirits in the air. Hallelujah. Jesus paid it all until it's finished, and it is finished. It's complete. He is risen. He is risen. He's alive. Don't you know it? And as soon as he gets that alive inside of your understanding, so much so that you can do it when I was just a little girl. And she shook me out of my reverie when she said, Carolyn Sue, you come in here and I'm got because we've got company coming. And I said, Who's coming? She said, Jesus. That was my mom. She said, Jesus, folks, what is real is that he's with you all the time. That I never forgot it. No matter what we've ever gone through, he and he just says, come. Come to the table. You don't have to see him to know it. But some have seen him. He's real. Would you pray with me today? He is alive. Let him be real. Go home with you today. Let him sit at your table and acknowledge him. Jesus, you're my Lord. Jesus, you are my Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Lion of the tribe of Judah. <laughs> we come to you now. We thank you because you're right here, right now, and you're reaching out to every individual out there in the stream today, wherever they are. And that you're feeling by the multitudes today accept your reality. And remember and realize that you wouldn't give up on us by coming down from that cross, but you stayed the force that couldn't hold you. And right now, today, I'm giving my whole self to you today. Whatever you want of my life, 
I'm, I'm, I'm yours. Here am I, send me, Lord. Use me for your glory. That you're reaching out to me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, just tell him, if I have sinned, forgive me, Lord. And he said, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins. And he says, reach up, take my hand, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to walk with you and I'm going to be with you and you're going to know, recognize going to walk together the rest of this path and you're going to be so excited when we join together in that place because heaven is real but I Lord and I will keep you and help you and protect you every breath you breathe and then we'll take your hand and we'll walk into that place called yonder I will be with you. So give it all to me. Take my hand. And I, in that moment of time that you need me, I'm going to be there. But walk with me. There's somebody that needs to hear your voice. That needs to hear you say, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And he's real. He's real to me. Won't you let him be real to you? Son, a blessing upon their heads and upon those that are here today. A blessing of reaching out, of ministering unto them. Uh, something that says, uh, oh, peace in my heart like it's never been before. Because Jesus is right with you. He's right there. He's right there. Now, Lord, if there are that the, those stripes upon your back, they were for our healing. Jehovah Rapha, our healer. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wherever you're going to go today, we're going to go downstairs and we're going to have a meal together. And I thank God for that. We're finally going to get to have it. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you all, every day that you sit down at that meal, remember Jesus is here. Thank you for being my Savior. He'll bless you. He'll bless you. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to say that to you. God bless you. God go with you. And we're going to say bye to you that's in our stream today. <laughs>